Nation. I'm Brad Pomerantz on the Central Coast, joined by Miriam Shaw. She is the Mayor Pro Tem of the beautiful city of Grover Beach in South San Luis Obispo County. And who would have thought 10 years ago that we would have legal recreational marijuana, but we do, Prop 64 passed. But let's back up a bit because uh, cities do have land use authority. And right now, Grover Beach is looking at medical marijuana. Correct. Do you have medical marijuana dispensaries right now? No, no. we do not. Got it. Um, mobile medical marijuana oh, you do have deliveries that. are legal at okay. this point. Well, that's 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 something. I mean, mm -hmm. some places don't even allow that. Right. So you allow the mobile deliveries, okay? Mm -hmm. But by 2018, the state is going to put a stop to that as it is, and then. Patients won't be able to receive right. medical marijuana unless there are brick and mortar dispensaries. So talk to us about what the city of Grover Beach is doing on that front. Because like we said, uh, we're both lawyers that the California Supreme Court ruled 7-0, I'm being a nerd, in a case out of Riverside that cities, even if marijuana is legal medically or recreationally, have land use authority to say no if they want. Correct. But it looks like you're going down a different path. Yeah, we saw an opportunity here, mm -hmm. and we actually heard from a lot of our residents, this is a medication, mm -hmm. this is a medication I rely on. Um, it, I've learned a lot about the uses. Kids use it if they have bad seizures. Right, epilepsy, we've heard that. Yeah. And you, actually, one of our um, good friends that we work with a lot at the League of Cities, his wife was struck with cancer, and she said this brought me through the process and I was so uncomfortable with the dispensaries that I had to seek out and I had to go to and there was nothing in mm -hmm. San Luis Obispo County mm -hmm. for me. Wow. So that got our attention. I understand. I understand. Yeah. It's compassionate of you, one could argue. It's quite compassionate. I mean, it is and right. I'm not going to make any bones about it. There yeah. is tax revenue for our city to right. be made. And we'll talk about that in a right. second. Are any of the other five cities, you know, you're that five cities group, do they have any medical marijuana dispensaries? No. Oh, so you'd be the first of the five cities? Yes. Okay. okay. We saw an opportunity there because the state is attempting to regulate medical marijuana, and unless a business is up and running by 2018, right. they don't even have a chance of getting a license. I see. So by regulating now, we give businesses a chance, that chance to get established and get that coveted state and license. And that's even for medical, not recreational. For legal medical uses, medical, yes. Right. They're only going to give out a certain number of licenses mm -hmm. and only to people who are established by so, 2018. So like you said, there are tax consequences mm -hmm. to opening up these brick and mortar medical marijuana facilities. Not as good as recreational. <laughs> I mean, that's a whole other question. but. Talk us through that. I mean, I don't necessarily begrudge a city a desire to, you know, bring in revenue when appropriate. Is that part of the calculation? Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, and it was, it's more than a desire. There's going to be a lot of regulation that has to go into this. Right. I mean, we're a town oh, I understand. of 13,000 13, yeah. people. We're going to have to hire more police possibly, we don't know, maybe more city uh -huh. employees to oversee the program. Right. So we started this actually back in the summer because uh -huh. we had to put a measure on the ballot to even create a new tax. And it passed? And it passed um, by a large margin. Did you need two thirds? Um, I don't think yeah. we needed two thirds, but, but we got 70%. Oh, so you did it. So yeah. people understand the program mm -hmm. and, you know, Marijuana is coming to California, it's, and I it's think just, it's a fact. Are the people yeah. in Grover Beach get that? Right. And and if it's going to be here, let's tax it and let's keep it legal and well, off the black market. Let's talk about recreational because as a result of Prop 64, you also can, as a city, decide whether to allow establishments to open that would sell marijuana for recreational uses. Are you starting to look at that yet? We. Are, have started looking at it in the way that when we passed the tax measure, we did allow for the taxation of recreational oh, use. So one could say so that was for, you know, there's good forethought there. Recreational, if it's ever allowed, right. will be taxed at 10%, while medical will be taxed at 5%. Which is an interesting discussion point, if I may, because as you know, as a result of Prop 64, the state will take 15% mm -hmm. as an excise tax. Then they're gonna take a cultivation tax on flowers and leaves. Mm -hmm. Then they're gonna take the sales tax, which is just normal. Right. 
And then cities and counties can have taxes, and you said that tax is going to be 10%. 10% for recreational. Right. That's all, those are a lot of taxes. That, yes. That, and I just wonder if the black market is going to be less expensive. Well, and everybody has that concern. Mm -hmm. We looked at a lot of taxation ordinances when we were thinking of ours, and we, right. we listened to a lot of comments from the public, and we tax at a lower rate than other cities are okay. taxing for that okay. reason, and especially pertaining to the medical, because it is a medication, sure. and we, we do want people to still be able to access it. Mm -hmm. I want to shift gears, if we may, and talk about a crisis that's facing not just Grover Beach, not just San Luis Obispo County, but the entire state of California, and that's the homeless crisis. Yes. And it is one that is just heartbreaking on so many levels. Mm -hmm. And what's unique about this crisis is you, know, you wouldn't expect to see homeless in Grover Beach, mm -hmm. downtown San Luis Obispo maybe, mm -hmm. but not Grover Beach, mm -hmm. not a road grandy. The homeless, I don't want this to come off the wrong way, but they're, they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's a crisis. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about what you're facing in Grover Beach. Well, I work a lot on this issue because I'm our, our representative to the county homeless Got board. It. Got uh, it. And the state of California has I think more homeless people than almost the entire nation. Well, no, we have become the homeless capital of, of the nation, and Los Angeles County to the south is now the homeless ca capital of, of the nation, specifically in terms of metropolitan centers. Right. So we, I think we're all dealing with this um, in, Gro in, and in Grover Beach and everywhere. We've seen rents rise. Right. And then, you know, those citizens that are just holding on to housing, they're losing it. And the people who are out there on the streets, they have no chance. Right. Here's a question for you, if I may. So Los Angeles County, like we said, really struggling. They went to their voters. The county went to their voters to ask for revenue through a, a sales tax for homeless services. The city went to their voters to ask for revenue uh, to build homeless facilities, permanent supportive housing. Is that something SLO needs to look at? I think looking at funding is one prong of it, mm -hmm. but a lot of times in our area, we have the nimbyism oh, that people <laughs> yes, just we do. cannot get over. Right. In South County, we had a situation a few years ago where there was a grant from a very generous family, the Clap Road Grant. There was a million dollars there to build a homeless service center. And the Five Cities Homeless Coalition looked at over 200 sites and nobody would accept this center in their neighborhood, in their area. We love the idea, let's let it go somewhere else. But if you don't have a service center, then the homeless will s literally scatter. Correct. And how does that help the situation? It creates vagrancy, it creates uh, mental health crises often, mm -hmm. it can hurt business, it can scare kids. Again, we're empathetic, I, I don't mm -hmm. want to say that, but. I these are the issues mm -hmm. we face whenever right. we have somebody who's delivering service as soon as the neighborhood starts to see certain people wander in and out of the neighborhood whether or not crime has right. has been committed we start getting calls what's going on move this out of my neighborhood we have a daily program in grover beach that provides lunch the people's kitchen and they have a long grandfathered permit to be doing so because they're serving food at a church that's served food for over 50 years. So it's the, the city really, we right. have no right to but permit or not still permit, complain. But, but people try to be accepting of it. And then after a while we get calls and we try to, to deal with it. So it's really a balance. Okay. And, and I worry most about right. the homeless you don't see, which are you. people that are working in your hair salons right who are working at your kids' in their school, cars. and they take showers, yeah. but yeah. they are homeless. We'll have you back. She yeah. is Grover Beach Mayor Pro Tem, Miriam Shaw, I'm Brad Pomerantz. It's Local Edition. <laughs>